it's so inspiring to watch that movie and to watch the growth of interfaith power and light. And because I can remember really before there was a religious environmental movement. Uh, I wrote The End of Nature 21 years ago, the first book about climate change. And I remember one of the things we were trying to do, a few of us back then, was begin to make some kind of interest in religious community. And it was very difficult among conservative, well, among liberal religious communities. Uh, the environment was viewed as a kind of distraction from the work of poverty or of fighting against war and things. And in conservative religious circles, it was viewed as a kind of way station on the road to paganism, you know. And, and, and so it was extremely difficult to get anyone to, to help, but things started to happen slowly but surely. Uh, people like Sally Bingham, who I had uh, saw just the other night, uh, 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 rose up and started uh, 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 figuring out wonderful ways to organize people like Episcopal Power and Light that became Interfaith Power and Light. Um, uh, we tried running all kinds of little campaigns, and some of them kind of worked. I remember when I was spending a year as a um, fellow at Harvard at the Divinity School, and just bored out of my mind, um, we organized a lot of these demonstrations outside SUV dealerships around Boston. Um, not really sort of polite, but we would just sort of let people test drive our, you know, hybrid cars and give them a map to the Toyota dealership and things. Um, but the one that really worked was the day that we got all the clergy, all sorts of clergy from the Boston area to come, rabbis and priests and ministers of all kinds. And uh, 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 so the night before, we'd drawn up the sign and with the youth minister of the church where I'd grown up and I, we put a big banner that said, WWJD, what would Jesus drive? We put it out front, and it was on the front page of the Boston Globe the next day. And after that, it just got picked up and spread around the country. And about six months later, the Evangelical Environmental Network began running this big ad campaign with it and things. Some of it had begun to sink in. But boy, it's starting to really happen now. And that's basically the story that I want to tell you just for a few minutes. I want you to understand just how many brothers and sisters in this cause now you have across the earth. We started organizing 350.org uh, two years ago. In the winter of 2008, when James Hansen at NASA, our greatest climatologist, uh, and his team published the paper that finally told us the most important number on the planet, how much carbon was too much. They said any value for carbon in the atmosphere greater than 350 parts per million is not compatible with the planet on which civilization developed and to which life on Earth is adapted. Okay. Strong language. Stronger language still when you know that we're way past it. We're at 390 parts per million now and we're rising two parts per million per year. That's why the Arctic is melting. It's why the oceans are 30% more acid. It's why we have 5% more water vapor in the atmosphere so that when it rains, it pours place after place after place. Last week, Rio de Janeiro, the greatest rainstorms ever recorded there. Thousands of people dead, hundreds of thousands of people left homeless. That's the world that we're building, and it's a painful one. But the good news is that as we began to go around and organize, we were working with all kinds of people human rights groups, with farmers, and uh, 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 people who work in the health field around the world, and most of all, of course, with young people the whole world over who are really the bulwark of this campaign, but also with religious communities of every possible kind. And they became, even in advance of this big day of climate action, some of the most important supporters that we possibly could have had. One of the very first within months to, to get on board, but one of the very first was Archbishop Tutu of, of, of South Africa, one of my great heroes and now a friend. And, and very shortly after that, the Dalai Lama, who gave a wonderful talk about 350 and its importance. And soon we were finding recruits and allies across the Buddhist world. 
patriarch Bartholomew of the Orthodox Church, the leader of 400 million Eastern Christians, and a refreshingly, to my mind, plain-spoken uh, 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 patriarch indeed. Uh, he gave a talk and said, global warming is a sin, and 350 is an act of redemption. <laughs> Thank you, that's good, that we can work with that, you know, that's spoken not just like a priest, but like an organizer, like someone who knows how to cut to the chase. Uh, 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 place after place around the world, we built to this big day of action on October 24th, and we really didn't know exactly what was gonna, how well it was gonna go, what people were gonna do, but as these pictures started flooding in around, from around the world, we were just overwhelmed. 5,200 demonstrations and rallies in 181 countries. Every country that isn't North Korea, more or less, was taking part in this thing. And it was astonishing to see the very first picture, because it's where the sun first rises, you know, on the planet, came from a ridge top high in New Zealand. Uh, 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 it was a sacred ridge top to the Maori people of, 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 of not only was it a sacred ridge top it had a big wind turbine up on it so it was the perfect place to kind of kick off the day with the maori elders and the engineers and everybody up there for some kind of great ceremony and then just around the world pictures flooding in from everywhere you can go if you think i might be kidding you can go to 350.org and check out the Flickr site, the Flickr account that we have, the sort of place you put photos as they're uploaded. There are 25,000 pictures of these 5,000 events, and they are stunning, just beautiful beyond belief. Buddhist monks with, you know, by the hundreds spelling out a human 350 with the Himalayas rising behind them in Ladakh or uh, 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 Four or five hundred pictures that are made up entirely of big demonstrations of women in full burqa or chador. To, to our eye, to my eye anyway, at first glance, he doesn't look like our image of who an environmentalist would be. But of course, people the world over are just as interested in the future as anybody else. Um, um, one of my favorite pictures of that day came from the Middle East. I'd been to Bethlehem to do some organizing. And of course, in my faith tradition, a kind of central place, but Bethlehem's hard to even get to uh, right now. Um, there's checkpoints and things all over the place. We gathered activists from around the region, or a few of them anyway, for a meeting, but we soon realized that though they wanted to work together, it was gonna be logistically impossible to. So somebody said, here's what we're gonna do. The Dead Sea is shrinking fast as the temperature rises. So, on the Jordanian shore of the Dead Sea, we're gonna make a giant human three, hundreds of people in a big three, and in Palestine, on our shore, a big five, and in Israel, a giant zero. And from the air, we'll be able to put them together and make the point that we're going to have to put down some of our old grievances a little to deal with the things that we have no choice but to deal with it. It was gorgeous. 